Hey everybody, we are heading to Arizona and we are getting our road finally. It sure is. So you might remember from our previous video, I had said that Jag was leaving the next day to go get it done. Jag's actually going tomorrow. We had some unforeseen circumstances. I will tell you all about it later on in this video, but it all worked out for the better because now we can all go together as a family. We're gonna be camping on our land, hopefully, officially, um, once the road is, ew, gosh. Getting the land itself felt big, but somehow this feels more real. I don't know. So stay tuned. Okay, we made it a little bit later than we thought we would. So it was pretty much dark when we were pulling up. So we have the camper parked, but we're gonna finish setting up in the morning. So yeah, everyone's <laughs> feeling a little bit rowdy. <laughs> we had peanut butter and honey. <laughs> for dinner and what did our dog do he got sprayed <laughs> by a skunk our dog got sprayed by a skunk it's a little crazy but that's how we like it There's one thing I've learned being a mother of boys when it comes to the fire. Don't try to keep them away from it. Just teach them about it. water with This dog stinks. Look how happy he is. Oh, no, you didn't. I feel like we're really moving out here for Rebel. He's so happy. He's just where he's supposed to be. Today's kind of our explore day. So I went to the down to the railroad tracks with the boys and they picked up a bunch of old railroad spikes. And um, while I did that, Jag got a little bit of alone time to work on his yoga practice, which is something he's been getting really into. And then when I got back, I told him I wanted to check out trail down to where the river is. And um, I'm doing that right now. So I want to show you something cool that I found. So it might just look like a pile of rocks to some, but these have definitely been placed like this. That was really cool. Um, I followed that path up and it actually even switched back and forth at the end and came back up to the top. So I think that was an old man-made path to get down to the river and I suspect that it was developed when they were making this old railroad that isn't here anymore. And I don't know, it's just cool. It kind of puts some things in perspective. This earth is so old and there's so many stories that came before us. So, fun exploring. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> okay, we are walking up our planned path for our road tomorrow. I'm excited but nervous. I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm ready to I'm ready to bring the camper up here and really really visualize where we're going to be living at yeah i think i'm just nervous because i'm like what if they just don't show up they'll be here <laughs>
I'm worried what if they don't come. I said they'd be here by now. I think I see them. Okay, they're here. Let's take a little break from the road and I wanted to update you as to what I was talking about at the beginning of this video, which was we got our road, but we almost didn't. So what does that mean? What am I talking about? Well, there's a whole nother story happening here aside from us just getting our road. And that is that we are also applying to rezone our land. Our land right now is zoned RU36. What that means is it is a rural zoning for 36 acres or more. We used to be part of a bigger parcel of land, but now that we're under 36 acres, we have to rezone it. And the next zone down from 36 is rural four. So for four acres or less. I have no idea who picks those numbers. I'm not sure if that's just in Arizona or if that's national, but for us, in order to have building permits, we had to rezone from RU36 to RU4, or I should say we are rezoning because we're still in the process, which is a little nerve wracking because you know, we can't get building permits unless we are successfully rezoned. Which leads me to my next point. When I applied for rezoning at the planning and zoning office for our county, they really made it seem like it was not a big deal and that we'd get it easy peasy. However, they have to send out letters and post signs for any neighbors that are within 300 feet of our uh, boundaries. And even though we are rural, we do have a few neighbors. And so we got not one, but two objections. <laughs> and I had to take a breath because at first I thought to take it personally, like they didn't want us specifically living out here, but that really wasn't the case at all. I mean, you don't move to this kind of rural space if you don't like peace and quiet, right? So when all of a sudden you see signs being posted nearby your land saying that someone that you don't know is rezoning from RU36 to RU4, I can understand how that can be anxiety provoking. And I think the two that objected were worried that the reason we were rezoning was because we wanted to subdivide the land which that they obviously didn't want like subdividing meaning chopping up the plot into four acre plots and then selling it to people to create like a little suburb um so what do you do if this happens to you i was able to get the phone number of one of the objectors through the planning and zoning office with that per person's permission they were sort of our major objector the other one i think was more well i'll get to that in a second so I was able to call them and just reassure them that we have no intention from of subdividing. It's just that because our lot is less than 36 acres, if we want to build anything on it, like our homestead, I have to zone down. And as of now, I think we are okay. So we'll see when the first meeting comes up, which is this next week. And then I actually happened to run into the other neighbors just driving along the road and I kind of waved at him through the window and, and she stopped and talked to me and said, I, I'm sorry, it probably makes me look like such a jerk. I'm really not objecting to you moving out here. I just think it's ridiculous that they don't have anything between 36 and four. So I'm hoping that means she's going to withdraw her objection. Um, but we will see. This is kind of right now, this is kind of the drama of what we're doing. Our first meeting is coming up next week. I'm, I'm going to do a full video about all of this, but I'm not sure when that's going to get out because there's a final meeting and that's um, a few weeks from now. So we'll see what happens, guys. Wish us luck because <laughs> if we don't get rezoned, that could potentially be pretty unfortunate. Um, but I'm staying positive and I think that's just what you have to do in these situations and communications key. I feel very lucky that I was able to talk to both these people because you know it's so easy to demonize someone um, when you've never met them. But when you've talked to someone in person, then they become more human, right? So I think they realize we just want what 
a lot of the neighbors out here want, which is just to be closer to nature, live the quiet life, have a small homestead, a nice place to raise our family, that kind of thing. So stay tuned for that one. Now let's get back to the road. You guys ready to ride down our road? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Oh, man. Hello, everyone. Hey, friends. We are done with our road. It was a lot quicker than we thought. Mm -hmm. And we did change up some plans. We changed where our home base is going to be. Mm -hmm. So the road's a little longer and the bulldozer did some work. But all that said and done, it only took six hours. We had them booked for two days. They did it in six hours. So mm -hmm. we're very impressed, feel very blessed and thankful for their knowledge and their capability. And, um, we're just walking along it a little bit here, enjoying it. Honestly, we keep checking on the kids and then walking up and down our road because <laughs> it's fun. But the bulldozer knocked it out. Um, what'd you learn? Anything? Watching him actually like carve the road. Mm -hmm. He like, he took it deeper than I would have originally thought. thought, but it needed it to, yeah. to fill out the length of the road. Yeah. The width of the road, sorry. And obviously, you know, our goal is to use permaculture practices, regenerative agriculture practices. So it does pain us a little bit to do a road, but at the same time, I I was out here access. the whole I was out here the whole time running around with him, kind of guiding him where I wanted the road because there were a bunch of like barrel cactus that I wanted to save and some choyas. So we we saved everything we could, and then we're hoping to make it up to the land in time. Mm -hmm. So it'll be even better than when it started. It was interesting to watch him bury the culvert. We did have to install a culvert with the new plan, which we yeah, can show we you. Yeah, we can We're show you guys that. It. Cause that's one of the, I don't know, it's kind of fun. And one of our awesome neighbors kind of had one lying around. So they let us use it. Yeah, a neighbor gave us this culvert. It's a 24 inch culvert by I believe 16 feet. Uh, we're going to be stacking rocks all around it to help guide the water in and out and to not degrade our soil around it. And I'm going to be installing check dams, chinchetas, gabions up and down every draw to slow the water down, get it to sink into our ground. And for those of you who are interested in our final cost, if this is something you're looking into, it was $1,175 which honestly everyone I've talked to says that's a great price so I don't know we might have just gotten lucky with this crew but we wanted to just give you some details um, because I know a lot of our um, friends and subscribers watching this are also looking into doing things like building a road onto our land so we're here to help you any way we can we're not experts we're learning but Forever. we're learning fast <laughs> Forever learners. Yep, definitely. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Comment below with questions or anything else you'd like to see. Talk soon. Thank you. Okay.